G'day guys, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be having a look at something that was sent out to me for the purpose of review. Remember the guys that sent me out the SUV door step a little while ago? We did a review on that, got the mates to all test it out. That was a good thing. And I'm expecting this to be very, very similar. It's quite different uh, to the SUV door step. And what it is, is the Life Do Fire Pit. Now it's actually quite a bit heavier than I expected it to be. It's made out of about 3mm steel uh, and it comes in four pieces and it flat packs. Now these guys have a tendency to send these things out to reviewers uh, on YouTube and get them to review their products and get the information out that way. Now I quite like that, obviously one, because it benefits me, and it's good to see that they're going to take a chance on the product, send it out to a whole bunch of people and get a whole bunch of honest, would like to think so, honest reviews on the product. Now with that in mind, this is a good option, it's well priced, but I think it needs a few modifications, but I think everybody is capable of doing those modifications. I put a link to a review that I've seen where a fellow added some legs to this, which I think are very handy. Not a requirement for me. Whilst this product works out of the box, it doesn't work as well as it possibly can with a few modifications. So we'll get into that. Firstly, let's cover off the cons because there aren't that many. Realistically, it's a fire pit. There's not much to it. There's one that would be nice to see it come with a bag, but obviously that increases the cost. This is $69.99 US. If it was 70 bucks Australian, I'd say, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Go and grab one. It's a great thing. Because of the Australian dollar at the moment, coronavirus is around about 50 something odd cents in the dollar, you're effectively going to double the price for this in Australia, which makes it around about 140 odd bucks, maybe call it 130 bucks with the conversion rate. That gives me a little bit of pause and makes me think about it. Similar to with the SUV doorstep, I think they're very well priced, if, obviously if you're located in the US, but with the conversion rate here to Australia, things change somewhat. A couple of other things it needs is some additional air holes down the bottom for breathing to allow the fire to breathe that little bit better. I think that'll give you a better overall experience. And the hand holes uh, where you pick it up need to be just that little bit bigger because they're not quite big enough to be putting your hands through with a set of fire gloves or something like that. So those three things aside, give me a bag, give us some better air holes and cut the hand holes just that little bit bigger and you'd be onto something. As far as positive things, it's really well made. It's a lot better made and a lot heavier than I expected it to be. It comes in around about nine kilos, 8.5 something. I was expecting this to be made out of aluminium when I and I expected it to warp. Not made out of aluminium, and it hasn't warped at all. You'll see in the footage here, when I've gone to cool it down, I've hit it with water, uh, which would have caused it to warp. It puts together really easily, and it packs up really good. Basically, that's the product. I don't need to show you too much. Let's go and have a look at it anyway. Now, what I'm going to do as part of the review is I'm going to show you some of the other products that I've used. Uh, aren't necessarily off the shelf. These have all been made one way or another. There's a couple of little off the shelf things. I'm going to take you through some of the other things that I've been using for cooking on fire when I go camping. We'll talk about the different situations that I use those. Just basically so you'll know what I'm actually comparing this against and what I've used historically. So you might be using some of these things as well and that'll allow you to know whether this is a product that you need to consider. Because it is coronavirus time and, and Australia is basically locked down, essential travel only, unfortunately going camping to do a YouTube review is probably not considered essential travel. I don't think YouTube reviews are, uh, are a necessity. So for everybody out there, look, stay safe, stay inside, um, do what you need to do, go and find yourself a project, go and do something in the shed, look after yourself, look after your family, look after the community. Basically just keep your head down, don't get this bloody thing, nobody wants it. So with that in mind, I'm going to knock up a couple of videos over this over this next few days, coronavirus time, because I can't get and do anything. Hopefully that'll help keep you entertained and keep you inside off the street. So from a design perspective, it, it can't be simpler really. It, it is literally just four sheets of plate steel with some holes and some slots in it. So it's certainly not unique in the market and there are a whole bunch of other options out there. But I think from a price perspective and from how well it's made, uh, I think this is a good option and one worth looking at. Keep in mind, while I haven't been out looking for something along these lines, you'll see I've got plenty of stuff in the shed that I use already anyway. I've just recently been to a caravan and camping show, so I've seen some other stuff that's been on the market. There's lots of stainless steel stuff, which looks absolutely brilliant, but it's several hundred dollars expensive, uh, and which makes it several hundred more dollars expensive than these. Now these come in around about $69, give or take, and that's a US. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the description, so you can go and have a look at these if you want to. But ultimately, yep, look, it's just, four sheets of steel and you just pull them apart like that and you can see from cartage that is how it packs down as far as carrying this around and carting it those handles come in handy 
uh, because you can just pick it up and carry it around like that. So you can see how flat that packs. Like I said, that's three mil sheets. So that's 12 mil uh, in total thickness. Um, and I'll put the other measurements of height and width uh, on the screen there so you can see those. That's gonna go into the front boot of the caravan. Uh, and if I'm not using it, I'm not even gonna know it's there. So it's that easy. And just in the ends, which is yeah, basically the legs, has a little wire to cut into each of those. Unfortunately, when I originally seen the pictures, I thought the life dew was actually cut into the bottom of the side panels, which would allow breathing for the fire. So life dew, if you feel like sticking your name on it and you have to do that, stick it on the sides rather than on the ends and that'll allow that fire to breathe and that'll save me having to drill some holes in there. I reckon it'll look nice too all lit up with the fire. I have to stick it on all of them and that'll save that little bit of weight on the whole unit itself. Just some ideas, there you go. You can have those for free. Now as you, can <laughs> as you can see, as far as cook options, I like to cook on fire. And you can see here's a few of the options that I've used over the year. Over the years, this one's just a little one that I picked up secondhand. Um, I tend to do a lot of my buying for camping gear on Gumtree and Facebook and the like. Camp stoves, I think everybody's got. Uh, I've actually got a couple of these. And because I got so excited about these when these come out, I also went out and picked up the double. Now I really like this unit, this was something made by an old fella that obviously had plenty of time on his hands. And the reason I like this is even though it's big, it packs up relatively small. It's never going to be as small as the life do over there. But outside something like that, buying something off the shelf that packs up like that, it's probably about as good as it gets. So we can take off our little camp oven, take our rods out. Take off our legs. Our little rods come out. And just pop into the legs there like that. Camp oven. Just dropped in. Legs on top. And that's how she travels. That being said, that's still too big to carry around the caravan. So another thing I've been doing with the little life too is looking at the different plates and stuff. Getting some smoke here. It's not that I'm tearing up because I'm glad to see it. Just getting some smoke in my eyes. One of the other things I've done with the life to here um, is I've gone and grabbed all the different cooking plates that I've got just to see if I can find one that's going to be a perfect fit. I haven't found that just yet, but I'm getting pretty close. Big enough to fit across one end of that, which would make feeding of the timber into that. Okay, I can obviously put it in the middle there if I want. So that's not a bad fit, but it's not exactly what I'm after. So then we've got this one. So it's a little bit small, but it will actually sit just inside. So I'm quite content with that. What I could do is just drill a couple of holes uh, in the side here and just put a couple of screws or a couple of bolts or something just to make sure that that doesn't you know, turn sideways and slip in. So I'm quite happy with that. Alternatively, that will sit sideways like that. I think that's actually a reasonable fit, that one. There's still plenty of air can get in under there for ventilation. Once this starts to, I guess, get a bed of coals down the bottom, what you'll find is you can see that it's starting to clog up there a little bit at the bottom. And this obviously impacts on its ability to breathe. So what you can do is just go along the bottom, just give it a bit of a brush or give it a bit of a tap. Not so much the coals that you want to chase out there, it's uh, actually the ash. And you will find that if you can clear that out sufficiently, the fire will pick up because it can breathe just that little bit better. Obviously it's good for feeding the fire, so it gives it fuel. Again, that V configuration feeds all that fuel back down into the middle. Where the problem lies is that it's just not getting the air it needs to those coals and to that fuel that's going to be sitting down the bottom to maintain that fire which will you know, keep the heat in the coals as well but allows the fire to breathe so it can just keep going. Now the construction of this thing is really really well made, quite better made than I was expecting to be honest. I had some pictures of it online and I was expecting it to be quite flimsy, I was expecting it to be an aluminium. Now point in case, this is a little aluminium tray, a barbecue plate that I got as a replacement for my gas rate barbecue. This is a thin aluminium so it's really really lightweight which is great for cartage. But the first time, very first time that I put it on that barbecue, it warped. I've, I have managed to get it fairly straight now, 
but as soon as you put some heat into that, it starts to turn up at the corners and obviously doesn't make cooking uh, a great experience. So that's why I'm glad that this little Life 2 fire pit wasn't made out of aluminium. But when it turned up and I picked up the package and I went, oh, this has got a bit of weight in it, it's just under 10 kilos, about 9 kilos. I thought, okay, this is a, a better made product than expected because this would be a nice little addition if this is going to fit well on this. Well, that is a pretty good bloody fit. I would almost say that that is a perfect fit for that. Now, if we can sort out those ventilation issues, it does have the holes in the side, and that's plenty of room for the fire to breathe there, but it needs to be able to breathe from underneath. But that's... I'm pretty happy with that fit, and I think we have a winner. Now, you can load quite a bit of timber up in this, which I was a bit surprised about. It's actually a little bit bigger than I expected it to be as well. Um, I guess it is a really good single or two-person little fire pit. You're not going to have a dozen people surrounded around this. But this is a really good convenient size. It's, it's small enough to be packable, but it's big enough to have a decent fire. I really like that. Now, while we're talking about options, here's another one that I picked up. This again is just one of those little half-cut LPG gas tanks. Uh, somebody's cut this up. They've drilled some holes in the bottom for aeration, which is good. Now, that's what we're talking about. You can see in the bottom of this, this one's got holes. And that's exactly what that one needs. It needs some holes in the bottom that can obviously let out the ash but they can let the air back in there as well. Now this is a great one. I think this cost me about 10 bucks off Gumtree. Little Life 2 is actually a bit more easier to use than something like this. It just lends itself, it lends itself to holding a little bit more timber. You can actually get a better fire out of the Life 2 than you can do out of something like this. These are still convenient, but from a pack down perspective, this is the size it is when you use it. This is the size it is when you pack it away. So this one, again, stays at home. Another benefit of the Life 2 over this one is the Life 2 is probably Mm, let's call it about three inches off the ground. It has some small contact points with whatever it's sitting on at the very end of the unit itself. Well, this one has that large ring. It's not too far off the ground at all. So when you sit this on grass, and I can tell you from experience from having this out the back, it actually burns a little heat ring into your grass. So it's not ideal from that perspective. If you're avoiding using fire rings on the ground, having something this close to the ground kind of defeats the purpose because you're still burning your grass and making a mess. So life do tick there as well. And another good thing about all the flat surfaces is it's real easy to clean. Let's throw her in against that back wall. Oh, wouldn't even know she was there. So that's it. That's, uh, that's where she's going to live basically from this point on. I pull it out when I'm camping. Especially if I'm at a caravan park or something like that that doesn't allow me to have a fire on the ground and you know I don't want to go and pay a deposit or something for a fire pit, I'll just pull it out. Jobs are good and away I go. That's the Life 2 fire pit. If you've got any questions, stick them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out, but uh, realistically, it's a fairly basic product. There's not too many questions you can ask, I think, on this one. But thanks for all the subscribers that have come on board. I haven't been as busy as I normally would be in knocking up YouTube videos. Got some other stuff going on, but I hope to get back into the swing of things very, very soon. Thanks very much for stopping by. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.